So you take some time to explore this core combination ranking system. This, by the way, is a great ranking system. Keep this one on your short list. So from here, we're going to want to save our own copy of this ranking system. Because Portfolio123 is not going to let you monkey around with their ranking system and wreck it for everybody else. So up in this tab here, save as, make your own core combination, just name it whatever you want. Curtis Hemmerling. Ranking system negative. Now you can make it negative or neutral. Now what this means is sometimes you'll have a factor, let's just say price to earnings ratio. But what if they aren't earning any money? So the PE ratio is NA. How do you want to treat that? Do you want to say that stocks that don't have any earnings are the worst possible stocks? Then rank it as negative. Or you could say, no, it's neutral. It's neither bad nor good. It's just, it is what it is. Then if it doesn't have a price to earnings ratio, if it pops up as NA, it'll just assign that as a 50 out of 100. It's just a neutral rating instead of a negative rating. Let's just leave everything as a negative rating if the NAs show up. Visibility is private. Click Save. Now we can change the weighting of all of these components because now we own this ranking system. It is mine, Core Combination Curtis Hammerling. You can click on Weights now and you can change the weights. I can hit Clear, Update, and Save. Now if they're all zeros, then it's assigned equal weight. It would be the same as hitting Distribute Evenly, 16.67% for each node. Update save. Okay, we can clear it and we can just take one component. Maybe I want low volatility and I want momentum. This does not sound like a good idea, but let's try it out. Now you're going to want to see the performance of the different components of the ranking system. When you design it, you want to understand how does this perform, not just on the 10 best stocks or the 5 best stocks, but how does this ranking system, how valuable is it? Does it make sense? If stocks are rated zero, are those stocks that don't perform well? And stocks ranked 50, they perform okay. Stocks ranked 90 perform very well. To do that, you're going to want to click on this performance tab. And from here, it's sort of just like a, a simple little back test. Let's just test it over the last 10 years. We're going to rebalance every four weeks is fine. Our ranking system, as we said, if NAs pop up, we're going to say that that's negative. Benchmark, uh, that's not really that important. Now our universe, at this stage, this is really important because if we're just saying, yep, test it on all stocks, even super illiquid ones, we're going to have some really messed up results. So for this purpose, I'm just going to say the Russell 1000. No, the S&P 500. Rank buckets. I'm going to keep this just as five buckets. So what this means is it's going to sort all of the stocks in the S&P 500 into five portfolios, 100 stocks each. Every four weeks, it's just going to resort them based on our ranking system of low volatility, high momentum. Slippage, no. Transaction, long. Minimum price, we're talking about big stocks. We don't need any further liquidity filters. And we want our chart to look like annualized returns. Go ahead and click run. Now what this is showing us is this is the S&P 500 over the last, I believe I selected five years. This has been the return. Now our ranking system, low volatility, high momentum stocks with the lowest momentum volatility ranking score on average only had, what do we have here? 9.8% annual return. Then stocks in the next portfolio, well, they did quite a bit better but it doesn't really seem what we'd like to see is we'd like to see this go up like a set of stairs. Stocks that are low ranked have the lowest return. Stocks that are high ranked have the highest return. 
So let's go back, just click on the performance tab, and I actually want to see that as a chart type, not annualized return, but a performance chart. Okay, so now it separates it. We can see that stocks ranked 80 to 100 is in purple, and stocks ranked 0 to 20 are worse stocks are ranked in blue. So let's go back over and let's pick some different factors. We're going to use, let's say let's use that value momentum concept again. Because this is a much more comprehensive value momentum system. As you went through you can see value based on earnings, sales, free cash flow, assets, and momentum. You know there's even industry momentum, the up down ratio. So let's just see how that performs. And I'm actually going to use 10 portfolios, so 50 stocks in each. And we're going to re-rank this every week. Just fiddle around with the settings. It's, it's up to you, however you want to do it. Okay, so again, this isn't telling us a whole lot. We can see that stocks that have uh, the highest value momentum they are stocks that did seem to perform the best, but aside from just stocks that were ranked the very highest, between 90 and 100, this wasn't really a very meaningful ranking system otherwise over the last 10 years. Just out of curiosity, let's broaden this to the Russell 1000. Furthermore, we want to do it, well, let's do it since 1999. Oh, I want to change my benchmark too to the Russell 1000 so that it agrees with our universe. Okay, now this is interesting. Stocks that had the absolute lowest value momentum in the Russell 1000 had a price performance of 0.2 since 1999. I just want to see a couple of things. The first thing I want to see is does that have anything to do with stocks that had a bunch of NAs or not applicables? I'm going to change this to neutral. So now if a stock has an NA it's going to give it a rank of 50 out of 100. Throw it into the middle of our ranking system instead of the bottom. And I'm going to rerun it just in case that it's throwing our NA stocks at the bottom. Okay, so this is good. What we're seeing is stocks that since 1999 in the Russell 1000 that have had low momentum and low value, they have performed terribly. And I want to see a performance chart of that. Now I can make the chart look a little bigger, but you can see down here that Interestingly enough, that that is not a good system. However, what we're also not seeing is we're not seeing stocks. Oops, where am I going here? We're not seeing that a low rank is bad, a high rank is awesome, and a middle rank is middle performance. We're not seeing that. So for me, I don't really like that. I like to see a set of factors that is meaningful, where stocks ranked 75 is better than stocks ranked 50, which is better than stocks ranked 25. So for me, I would keep trying to develop this idea further. Now you can do that by adding in different formulas, you can add in different weights, you can even change your base universe, but let's just go ahead and try one more thing. I really like this core sentiment. I really like it a lot when it comes to large stocks. So let's try stocks that have high sentiment, high momentum, and high value. 50, 50, 50. It's not going to like this. When you go to click update, it says, can't do it. Okay. So what we do now is we hit the normalize button. And it will normalize it. 33.33% each. Update. Save. Go back to performance. And I want to change this back to 
the S&P 500. As you can see, I really just want you to fool around and get the concept of what the ranking system is and how to do some of these performance back tests with it. And sure, let's do it every four weeks over the last 10 years. Okay, so anyway, you're just going to get the concept of how this works. And I just want to show you clear sentiment 100, just the sentiment ranking system itself. I really do like this system. Let's say every week. That's over the last 10 years. So you're starting to see a little bit more of that staircase effect where it goes from low to high. And in fact, let's do it since the beginning of our history, since 1999. You're seeing this even more. So stocks that were ranked the lowest with sentiment, you have, it, it does about the same as the S&P 500. And stocks that are ranked the highest, it's roughly doing double performance. So go ahead. Just pick a variety of ranking systems here in P123 ranking systems. Just pick whatever you want. Snoop through them. What's the O'Neill ranking system? Uh, make sure you save it as your own version first before you can go into the weights. Change that around. Go into the performance and fiddle around with that too. And really get a feel for how to do performance back testing on ranking systems because this concept is vital. This, you'll be spending a lot of time in this section of Portfolio 123.